Hello and welcome to this podcast brought to you by the Isle of Man Anti-Cancer Association. My name is Malcolm, a former surgeon and presently chairman of the Isle of Man Anti-Cancer Association. And my name's Sandy. I'm the executive officer of the Isle of Man Anti-Cancer Association and a cancer survivor. In this podcast, we want to talk about gynaecological cancer awareness. Women have a lower incidence of most types of non-gender related cancers than men, apart from thyroid and gallbladder, due to factors other than simple lifestyle choices. So we want to focus here on cancer awareness in the organs related to the female reproductive system and as such are only seen in women, so ovarian, cervical and vulval cancer. Ovarian cancer is a tumour that warrants a high level of awareness. It is often termed the silent killer for the very reason that it can give rise to very few symptoms in the early stages of the disease, many of which are rather vague, and in some individuals the disease can spread before they are aware that there is anything amiss. The symptoms that the disease might produce are persistent stomach pain, persistent bloating or increased stomach size, difficulty eating or feeling full quickly, needing to pass urine more frequently, with occasional other symptoms which can include back pain, change in bowel habit, either diarrhoea or constipation, feeling tired or tired all the time. Many women might experience a number of these symptoms from time to time associated with a number of less worrying conditions such as IBS, ovarian cysts or polycystic ovary syndrome. There are a number of key factors to be aware of though. Their persistence. In ovarian cancer, they don't go away. Their frequency. They can occur on most days. They're new, so they probably started in the last 12 months. They are unusual, so really they're not normal for you. It's important to keep a diary of your symptoms if they are persistent or occur at least 12 times in a month to show it to your GP. A copy of such a symptom diary is available from the Ovarian Cancer Action website at ovarian.org.uk or the Macmillan Cancer Information Centre at Nobles Hospital. The risk factors associated with ovarian cancer are identical to those of breast cancer. Cervical cancer is a cancer that starts in the cervix, sometimes described as the neck of the womb within the upper part of the vagina. Although accounting for only around 1% of all cancers, it is the most common form of cancer in women aged under 35, although its prevalence is declining within the population. Potential early symptoms associated with cervical cancer are abnormal vaginal bleeding, usually between periods or during or after sex. This is probably the commonest symptom. Women who have gone through the menopause may find that they have some new bleeding. Occasional other symptoms include discomfort during sex or an unpleasant vaginal discharge. Very early cervical cancer may have no symptoms. A lot of women will experience these symptoms at some stages during their life due to a variety of other simple gynaecological conditions, but it is important you see your GP or practice nurse to get them checked out. There is also a screening program for cervical cancer, which is very effective at detecting tiny changes in the cells of the cervix before they develop into cancer and before any symptoms would be noticeable, resulting in a 50% reduction in the incidence of invasive cancer since its introduction in the 1960s. The smear test involves taking a small sample of the cells from the cervix, which is then sent to a laboratory to be checked, but it's not appropriate for ladies who already have symptoms. They need to be seen by a gynaecologist. Women aged between 25 to 64 years of age are invited to attend cervical screening every three to five years. A letter is sent in the post to say that your cervical smear test is due and you'll need to make an appointment at your GP surgery or the Staywell Clinic. And they run it on the evenings at Nobles Hospital, an entirely female staffed uh, clinic, to have this done. There's also some extremely good news about cervical cancer. Studies have now shown that most cervical cancers are caused by certain subtypes of the human papilloma virus, or HPV, which is spread during sexual intercourse. A vaccination programme is now in place and offered to both girls and boys aged 12 and 13 in secondary schools. The virus can also cause other cancers and this uh, vaccination programme may ultimately lead to the eradication of the majority of cases of cervical cancer. 
Vulval and vaginal cancer are rare cancers usually seen in women over 75 years of age. They are both commonly associated with similar subtypes of the human papillomavirus or HPV, also seen in cervical cancer. Symptoms associated with these tumours include bleeding, a lump which may be warty, an ulcer, a discharge which may be watery and foul-smelling, persistent itching, pain and tenderness, change in skin colour and thickening, or painful frequent urination. If you have any concerns with symptoms that could suggest you may have ovarian, cervical, vulval or vaginal cancer, go and see your doctor or practice nurse. Most of the time it will turn out to be something simple and respond to simple measures. But if it's a tumour, then the earlier that you seek treatment, the better the chances of successful treatment and the quicker that you will be back to enjoying your normal life. There is a lot of good information available about cancers that predominantly affect women. For general information, you can visit the Macmillan Cancer Information Centre at Nobles Hospital or contact them on 650735 or you can have a look at their website, which is macmillan.org.uk. If you want to find out when your cervical screening is due, then you can contact the screening office on 642640. To make an appointment with the Stay Well Clinic, phone 642638. Information on the HPV vaccination, you can talk to Public Health on 642639. There are also details about cervical screening and HPV vaccination on the gov.im website in the Health and Wellbeing section. For those who want more information on ovarian cancer, Ovarian Cancer Action has a very informative website, which is ovarian.org.uk. A good site for info on vulval or vaginal cancers you can search under nhs.uk. Thank you for listening to this podcast.